Let me give you an example of a context three grammar before we even introduce it formally. So let's say we want to be able to represent all possible Boolean expressions. The Boolean expressions are going to be represented again as a string of characters, and I want to be able to, given this string of characters, be able to represent whether it contains um, a Boolean expression, which in this case I can represent, this is one example, so let's ignore white space for a moment. Uh, basically what we have is we have uh, true or false, this is what L is pointing at. Uh, so we can have true or false and then combinations of ands and ors nested, right? So you could have something like, um, where is the, this is notepad. So each line I'm going to write one possible expression. So T would be one expression. Let's say that T or True or false would be another expression. So let me just write my. Sorry. Another could be false. Another could be false or true and false. Okay. So no parentheses. You just have a sequence of. Uh, in this case, strings, and each string represents either, um, you know, a Boolean expression. So basically, I want to be able to write something that is able to understand these things. So you have true or t uh, false, f for false, f for false, t for true, or for or, and and for end. Uh, but you could also imagine that a means and and or mean o means or. If you're confused with why isn't everything just a character, um, just for the sake of making it more understandable. Okay, so now let's try to understand what we have on the, on the left. We have a grammar, and what we see is each line is a rule. Okay, and what each you will see these capital letters, and capital letters mean a variable. Okay, so this is a a variable, this is another possible variable, and so on. Variable, 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 variable. Things in typewriting are known as terminals. So end is a terminal, or is a terminal, t is a terminal, and f is a terminal. Okay, and here in this diagram I, I wrote with a little underscore underscore terminals, and everything else is a variable. Okay. So each rule Oops. Each rule is this line, and it's separated by an arrow. And this is saying that whenever I see a variable b, I can replace it by this expression. Whenever I see a variable b, I can ex replace it by this expression. Whenever I see this b, I can replace it by this l, which represents a literal. And a literal could be either true or a literal could be false. Right? So if you have a Boolean, you can replace it by this expression that then has a b and a b here. Okay, so it creates new variables that you can then use to replace. So you can interpret a grammar in two ways. Either you think of it as all possible strings that you generate, so you you take b and you think about all possible uh, expansions that you could generate. Right? If I replace b by this. Uh, any number of times, I will just have b and b and b a sequence of times, right? So I would have something like b, and then I can replace this by b and b, and I can replace this by, if I replace the first b, I could replace b and b and b and can replace b and i can add b and okay so can i replace this end no end is a terminal so there's no rule for it, it means it cannot be replaced but b b can replace because b 
is a variable and it has an arrow, so it can be replaced. Okay, so I can replace b by t, so another possibility would be uh, I can replace this b by t, right? Sorry, not t, b by l, b by l, right? And I can replace l by t, but I could have also replaced that l by f. So in this case, now I have this link. So at each arrow, I only, I'm only replacing one letter. So let's say I want to replace this B. I can replace this B by L, right? And I can further replace this L. I could replace it by F, right? And I can replace this L by L. I can replace this L. I can now replace this B by another um, by another B or B, right? You can you can replace any variable by any of its expansions at any point. So you don't have to do it from left to right. You can pick something in the middle, uh, and then you can even, you know, now I want to replace this L by this L. I can. Uh, and now I can replace this L by T, I can, and then I can replace this B by L, I can, and I can replace this T by T, I can as well, and this by F, okay. And at this point there are no more variables, so this is a final string, and what I want you to understand is this is an example of a string that is accepted by this grammar. Okay, so in this case, the grammar represents end, but you can think of end as a special character as well. Okay, it's basically how intuitively you can start from a variable and to know if something is accepted, you need to be able to find a way to rewrite it such that your given string is accepted, if you want to think it backwards. So let's say you have this string. This string belongs to this grammar that I showed in this slide because you can by a series of zero or more steps sorry of, of one or more steps uh, start from the from this variable b and eventually generate the string that you want okay so now you may be asking but how do I know which variable to start actually in a grammar uh, there's only a single variable that start that represents kind of like the you know the start state you only have one initial variable and if you don't see it and you won't see it when I show you a grammar is basically the first uh, rule says what is the initial variable so the initial variable here is L, B but not L don't worry because we're gonna uh, formalize all of this uh, following so it's gonna be made very explicit